Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks video. Now today we're going to look at how to create more complex types of walls using some of the built-in standard wall tools and also some of the uh, other types of walls that I'm going to show you using things like the NURBS 3D tools. So this is something that's come up quite a bit in the training that I've been doing recently. I do training all over the world globally and a lot of my clients are interested in moving beyond the standard types of walls. So let's have a look at this in a moment. So I'm going to go over to the wall tool. Uh, the shortcut for that as you can see is 9 on the tool palette. Now you'll notice that I've already got access to lots of different wall styles. Um, I've talked about this a few times um, in some of my earlier videos on making libraries and stuff. But basically I've got access, just let this load in for a second, to a really nice library of uh, JRA UK walls. Now these are all kind of standard wall types that I've adapted and made a bit simpler. So if you're interested in that, take a look at my website. I do sell these libraries and that's a really nice little aspect to load those in as favourites. But I quite like the look of uh, this one, like a timber frame with a brick wall. So let's just double click on that. If I do want to take a peek at it in more detail, I can. And the great thing is, remember that all of these things can be edited. Um, and I've got some really nice sort of simplistic classes. They're based on Uniclass, but a much, much more simple system. A for architect and then hyphen the component. So really straightforward. And the nice thing about these is they're all sort of pre-textured as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop a wall in. So what I'm going to do is click G to create a datum here. Tab, 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 and I'm just going to go 3M, uh, just so I can kind of click to start there, and then draw my line six, six metres long. So I just wanted to have a little bit of wall section in the middle. Now let's take a look at this wall um, in plan. You can see I'm working in dark mode at the moment, so as to look a bit different. Um, I could just turn that off if I wanted, just to show you how it looks, but I kind of like the idea of a dark mode video today. I'm going to pop it into 3D view. And you can see at the moment it isn't three-dimensional at all. So there's two things we can do. We can either just simply tap in the height, which is what I'm going to do here, or I could link it to the layer wall height. So if I actually edited the height here, that would actually bring up the wall height itself. But let's just go for it, keep it nice and simple. Let's go for a three-meter wall. Great. Okay, so uh, nothing clever about that. We've just done a standard wall at this stage. But what happens if your walls aren't that standard? Um, and let's say that we've got like a, a kind of retaining wall or some sort of leaning element to the wall or maybe some buttresses on this complex wall. Now, how do we do that? So one thing that we can do is we can take our drawing tools. So I'm going to get my rectangle tool. And at the moment, I've got the um, automatic face uh, enabled. So that does mean, remember, that I can now draw on any face dynamically. So basically, what I'm going to do is click and draw a big rectangle over the whole face here. And I'm going to extrude this. Now, just be careful on 2021, wonderful new feature is the push-pull combine mode. If this is turned on, then it will actually add to the wall. And I don't want to do that at this stage. Okay, so I'm going to bring that out by, say, say 500 mil. Fantastic. So all you can see is we've basically just got an extra shape on the wall. Now, the trick here is to select the wall and the shape, and basically what we can do is add them. But before we do that, I'm going to do a bit more wall sculpting on these items. So a good little tip here is let's bring off the 3D tools, and I'm going to go for a really nice little tool called the Taper Face Tool. Now, the great thing with this tool is what we can use it for is to taper any individual face. Um, and you'll notice that if you want to, you can select the back face by holding the Alt key down. So that's selecting this bottom face or back face. Now I can click and I can just start angling this face at the top. So I think actually I'll just go all the way back. Okay, so you can see we've now extruded our shape. And what we're going to do is basically select the shape and the wall, go up to the AC menu, and we're going to go to Create Wall Projection. Now this is really cool, this is going to enable us to add the, our extruded shape to one of the components of the wall. So let's go for the clay brick, the outer skin here. Um, we also get a cut through plane height, but all of these options come back available in Object Info as you can see. So if we go to the top plan view now, um, what is nice is, depending on the height I cut through, that will change this thickness here. So if I cut through 100mm say, you'll see it will get a bit thicker. If I was to cut through at uh, three meters, it would literally just be the thickness of the wall because you're not seeing anything. Let's keep it at one meter high. 
Now, one really nice advantage of uh, this workflow is that the wall still thinks it's a wall. Um, so basically, when we drag in, say, a window and insert that into the wall, you can see basically that will work quite nicely. Let's just mirror that one across and just pop that back into the wall there. Excellent. So let's have a quick look at that. Yeah, excellent. That's looking nice. Um, let's just do the same thing with a door. I just snap that into this middle section here and hand it that way. So this is one of the things I like about this technique. Um, the objects still work as if, you know, uh, this actually is a wall. So very different to extruding. I'm going to go into perhaps the settings, just adjust that door. So we've got like a glazed door in there as well. But this really, really makes a difference when you're trying to work with um, more complicated elements in your BIM projects. The fact that you can actually add or create uh, projections or recesses. So I'll just show you how the recess works. What we'll do is we'll delete this window here and we'll give ourselves a bit of space. Let's spin that around there. I'm going to hover over this point here and click the G key. I really like this little technique so I can type in 500 mil. So start accurately. Um, so I can start accurately in 3D away from that point there. Click. I'm going to do uh, model extrude. And because I'm going to go back into the wall, I'll do a minus 100 mil. But this time, when we select the wall and the shape, we'll just go to the AC and create a wall recess. And that one enable us again. We've got the cut through plane to essentially cut through the wall and make a nice little niche. The advantage being, obviously, you see that in top plan as well. So it's a very effective technique for wall sculpting. Um, I can do quite a bit more complex stuff here as well. There's a few other techniques that I would like to show you in other videos. Uh, but I think that's really great just to kind of expand more complex walls um, when you need this type of thing. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and um, we're just going to play out with a few clips from my book that I wrote back in 2015, believe it or not, just to really show that Vectorworks has always been able to create quite complex different types of walls. You've just got to try some different techniques. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.